Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. This is the month of fasting or Ramadan, and we are here at All Saints Church with Reverend Bacon, who uh, is a great friend of the Muslim community, and who has, in fact, fasted with us on during several Ramadan. Talking of fasting, um, first of all, let's look at fasting from the uh, perspective of other religions and how do they see fasting as and maybe you can comment on that. Uh, one of the beauties of fasting is that fasting is a spiritual discipline of all the world's wisdom traditions. Christianity along with Islam, along with Judaism, and, and, and. So fasting is at the core of what all world religions hold in common. It is a moment of um, interfaith meeting. It is at the core of going deep into our spirituality, as well as having a deep sense of God consciousness or God awareness. Fasting is not just about avoiding food. It definitely has a moral and social sort of consequence. Can we reflect on that together? Well, for us, uh, Muslims as well as Christians, you really can't separate the moral and social dimension from the spiritual dimension. It is all caught up into one. Mm -hmm. And so you really cannot be a spiritual person without struggling with your social conscience and social awareness and responsibility. The beautiful thing about fasting for me and I think for you and others is that uh, fasting always raises the issue of our relationship with others as well as our relationship with God, as well as our relationship with our own choices as individuals, as persons who are exercising a freedom of choice that we were given by our Creator. Yes, and, and, and the, the aspect of fasting in which you discipline yourself in certain ways of, of uh, avoiding the excesses uh, perhaps needs your reflection also on that. Well, the heart of fasting for me is that moment when you are hungry or when you're thirsty. And rather than automatically reach for some food or drink because of the discipline that you're in, be it in Ramadan or the Christian fasting season is Lent, um, we are called to stop. And in that moment of stopping and thinking, that is an intrinsically sacred moment to stop and have self-awareness, awareness of why you're hungry, why you're thirsty, why you're fasting. It is a, a great moment to, to, to stop. It, it really is intrinsically sacred to simply stop and ask yourself, uh, why you're doing this. How is the, that different from Christian traditions? Well, the Christian tradition of Lent is to fast from in order to make an openness for. And so it is up to the individual Christian to make a choice about what his or her discipline of fasting is going to be from year to year. So rather than there being a prescribed fasting from sexual relations, food and drink, and fasting from sunup to sundown, the Christian is given, given a much more um, license to make a choice about what she or he would fast from. In, uh, in, a, in Ramadan, Muslims fast from pre-dawn to sunset. In Christianity, or Christian way of fasting, is there a time limit? Or There's not a time limit. Okay. Uh, Lent is generally six weeks long mm -hmm. in length. It does not include Sundays um, because Sunday for the Christian tradition is a celebration of the resurrection and so cannot be counted as one of the days of Lent or days in Lent. And so um, it truly is up to the individual to decide then on Monday through Saturday what she and he will fast from and for how long. Now, there are Christians who fast from certain substances or certain habits, and they keep that fast 24 hours a day, seven days a week for the entirety of Lent. It's 
less rigorous than actually doing without food and drink and uh, sexual um, pleasures and intercourse. I, I would like to point out that during my days in Boston when I was training, I, I have gone through this period of Lent and, and eating fish till, <laughs> till there was, I thought there would be no more fish left in the ocean. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, uh, so that is uh, uh, that practice of, of disciplining yourself yes. uh, on both sides to the extent that you understand uh, the excesses that you are committing yes. and your relationship with, uh, with uh, cleaning your relationship with God and His creation is the, is the purpose of fasting. It is the purpose of fasting. Yes. And what we do during Lent and the Christian fasting is to have in mind the fast of Jesus okay. in the desert for 40 days and 40 nights. Um, as you well know, um, uh, in terms of religious symbolism, 40 is the symbol of maturity. Mm -hmm. And so 40 days, 40 nights, 40 years, um, that is very significant for us. So the idea is that we are not fasting alone, but we are fasting with Christ in the wilderness as he prepared for his testing mm -hmm. prior to going into ministry. So there is a, a, a sense of the cleansing of one's relationship with God as also one's relationship with others, also one's relationship with self, because mm -hmm. This took place historically with Jesus mm. right after he had been baptized and had received this epiphany that he was the beloved. Mm. And so the idea is that we also fast mm. to remember that we are the beloved. Mm. So there's really a triangle of relationships here, one with oneself, one with the others, mm. all of our sisters and brothers on the planet and the planet itself, and also our relationship mm. with God. Well, c continuing on the theme of 40, I, I would also like to just share the information here, but you probably know that it was the 40th year of Prophet's life that he first received the revelation of the Quran, Prophet Muhammad. And that's, that thrills me because it once again reminds us that we are all one, that all of our religions are coming out of this common resource of truth and refreshment and compassion and revelation. And for the prophet Muhammad um, to do that in his 40th year, that is so resonant and so harmonious with everything we know in the Christian Bible, being scripture from Hebrew scriptures as well as Christian scriptures, of the importance of the 40th year. It's beautiful, beautiful. Once again, thank you very much, Reverend Bacon. It's always a source of great pleasure and this indeed has has made my Ramadan even better. Thank you. Very good. You're very welcome. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. you and I have been traveling this road for almost 40 years. Now it's time slightly more. Flight probably more, yes. Yeah. Uh, I think what we need to do here is to look back and see what has been achieved and then come to what we need to do more. So yeah. let's see, uh, how do you see uh, the whole community at this point from where we were to where we are now? Yeah, I think uh, there has been progress the only thing that I am lamenting a little bit, it sh should have been more and faster. Because the world does not wait for us. Mm -hmm. And yes, we are progressing, but our pace of, pro of progress should be much faster than that. And uh, I was hoping that over 40 years, the amount of change that you and I and similar people, people have been trying to create should have reached a higher threshold mm -hmm. than what we have now. No, but then when you say more and faster, uh, how do, uh, what do you think was lacking and what do you think could have been done differently? Well, 
let me talk about the community because we really were it was I'm, I'm not arrogant but it was clear very clear in our mind what we want to do but the community it took a long time of experimentation and of doubts and sometimes of sluggishness mm -hmm. to take the steps towards progress mm -hmm. case at point of course because me and you worked on that early on in the idea is of American Muslim identity while it was very clear in our mind that this is the only solution an immigrant community from all over the world can have and survive yet uh, people say it for long doubting the idea and you, you are very aware of you are trying to Americanize Islam you are trying to create another Islam for America and that uh, uh, you are cutting your relationship with the Ummah of Islam uh, these uh, questions which are of course uh, are not backed by anything it is just an anxiety took long time for uh, the community to come to reality so the, that's the community aspect of it I'll try to explore that a little further but uh, from the leadership point of view uh, as you see the leadership in the American Muslim community uh, evolving over this period of time of the last five decades uh, would you not agree that sometimes the leadership itself uh, and its orientation was uh, not appropriate to uh, uh, to the to the times and the place we were. Uh, I mean, I'm yeah. going to quickly point out that initially, the first few years that I uh, uh, experienced here in this country during my residency, and uh, the talk was about Islamicizing. Yeah. And there was so much focus and so much energy spent in the concept of Islamicizing America. Yeah. And now uh, the whole paradigm has to Americanize Islam. Yeah. So would you not see that that was also a leadership problem uh, in the beginning? Uh, of course it was. And uh, we have been inflicted by an idea of what leadership is. We thought that leadership is to reflect the will of people, which is not leadership. Uh, this is call it uh, parliament election, call it popularity context, etc. But the leadership should pioneer the change, should be daring, mm. should be ready to to reach the unreachable star, mm -hmm. and should be ready to carry and to pay the consequences of that. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, this was not the culture. The culture is wh what can you say which is not wrong but will cap capture the fascination and the admiration of the people. Mm -hmm. uh, so you find yourself saying things that if you just uh, probe a little bit, they are unrealistic, will not happen, and just uh, feeding into the the pool of frustrations that the people have. Of course, I'm talking general, not all of them like that, but I'm talking about the general color of things the way they were. 